My name is Tom Brislin, and I graduated in class of 1996. Some of my favorite memories from William Patterson happen right here on this stage. The performances really stick out of my memory, especially one time when I played with the big band and Michael Brecker, the late great jazz saxophonist, was our guest and uh, really caused a lot of excitement through the whole program. And it, was, it was just a really special uh, time. I didn't have a job on campus per se, but I was always gigging and I was always taking what I was learning here out into the world and putting bands together. And as I was about to graduate, I started working for the summer jazz workshop here. And so I was a counselor two summers in a row, right, as, right near the end of my college career. After I graduated, I was performing a lot Glenn Burtnick, local New Jersey favorite, and soon after I started touring and recording with Meatloaf uh, on a lot of TV appearances and world tours, and I still tour as well as teach to this day. One thing I remember about my experience here at William Patterson was how driven and motivated most of the students in this jazz department were, and I was compelled to start gigging right away, during college, after college, and I think that sort of hustle mentality that we call it, just picking up the phone and seeing if someone wants to work with you, or if there was an opportunity to perform, that really carried over, and that's what led to the auditions for Meatloaf, and after that, uh, I was asked to perform with Yes, and Debbie Harry from Blondie, and there was a sort of a sequence of tours, but the common thread was that I had to show up ready right from day one. Last year, I performed with Glenn Burtnick's Summer of Love concert here at Chase Center, and it was the first time I'd been on campus in a few years. I'd come back periodically to see some performances, especially, say, senior recitals for my students that I knew, uh, but this was the first time that I had been uh, at Shea and performing for a, a full hall in a while, so it was a really great experience to see campus again, see what's happened to it, how it's grown since I've been back. When I came into William Patterson, the music management department was where I headed, and that was Dr. Marconi's area. And as far as the performance track went, I came in as a classical major because that's what I was ready to do. I had been performing and competing in the classical realm throughout high school. But what I did was I got into the department as a music management major, and then I started meeting the members of the jazz studies department, the students who were giving me some guidance, and they helped me craft my audition materials. And Rufus Reed was the one who auditioned me and got me into the jazz track. And as soon as I got into the jazz track, that's when Dr. Dempsey began here. So that was a really great experience. Uh, it's very welcoming, and also understanding that not all of us grew up listening to only jazz from the time we were born. So he, he had that versatile musical spectrum of knowledge that helped people like me focus in on, on jazz. At William Patterson, I learned that nothing is going to be handed to you, and you really have to earn it. This was a competitive department, and it was a small department. There were only a limited number of spots available, and you really had to work and show not only that you were ready with your ability, but ready with your desire to work. One thing I've learned is that you never know who's going to show up when you're performing, so I guess be ready. Uh, on one tour with Francis Dunnery in 2009, Robert Plant came, and Francis and Robert had worked together before, and it was unknown whether or not he was going to join us on stage, but we were all hoping he would, and came up into uh, a number with us. And this is a voice that I've been hearing since I was in the room, mm -hmm. so having that sort of legend standing three feet away. And we were improvising off of each other too, so I had to be ready for that too. So you never know what's gonna happen, but it was a great experience. Deborah Harry did not like being called an icon, so I'll call her a legend. Um, she was amazing, and I performed with her and was her musical director for her solo tour in 2007 for an album called Necessary Evil. We did a few North American tours together, and in fact, I got some of my bandmates from Spireland to join in on the fun as well. I think willpower to me means 
no excuses, believe in yourself, and own your craft, because your skills are something that can't be taken away from you. Sure, they may need to be sharpened once in a while, but that's the willpower to keep your skills in order and to keep moving forward.